Help support Name Explain by liking this video, leaving a comment, and subscribing to the channel. Could it possibly be? Are the old legends true? Wow. It is! It's the fabled lost city of Atlanta! Sometimes it seems that features of language can reappear in the strangest of places. The same or similar sequence of letters appearing in names of multiple unrelated things, like how IGHT appears at the end of so many words, like with light, night, and tight, or something like how appendix and apprentice both start with APP. Sometimes these words with similar strings of letters in them are etymologically connected, though sometimes it's nothing more than a big old coincidence, with enough people making words in different languages all across the globe and only a set amount of sounds and characters to portray those words, it's inevitable that some are just going to sound the same but not be connected. That might seem really boring but honestly I find it amazing in its own weird way. It reminds me of the whole put a monkey on a typewriter for an infinite amount of time and it'll eventually type the complete box of Shakespeare thing. Anyway, that's getting a bit off topic. Today's video is looking at three names and some extra words that are all very similar. These three primary names being the city in the US state of Georgia, Atlanta, the mythical underwater city of Atlanta. Atlantis, and the ocean between Europe slash Africa and the Americas, the Atlantic. One of these are a city, one of these are an ocean, and one of them is a city in the ocean. So aside from their names, they are weirdly connected in some weird Venn diagram way too. Though this isn't graph explain, it's name explain. It is those names we are interested in, and how they all have a similar start to them. This being how they all start with Atlant. How did this happen? Well it seems that in a weird way all three of these names did derive from the same source, kinda, and that being the original Atlant, or as he was actually cool before his name got changed to fit in with established suffixes better, Atlas. Atlas was a titan from Greek mythology. He was the son of fellow titan, Lapetius, and Oceanid Clymer. He was not an only child however, as he had three brothers, Prometheus, Epimetheus, and Menetius. It was he and his brother Menetius who took the side of the titans in the Titanomachy, a years long war in which some of the titans rebelled against Zeus and the other gods. Atlas himself eventually rose to be the leader of this rebellion, however it seems his leadership skills weren't too too good as the titans eventually lost this war and Zeus stayed atop Mount Olympus. Atlas wasn't killed though, for their treasonous actions Zeus needed to punish the titan rebellion, and as Atlas was the leader of the rebellion, he got the worst punishment of them all. Atlas was condemned to hold up the heavens, the earth, and well, everything on his back for all eternity, not being allowed to ever move so everything stayed where it was meant to be. And this is where he still lives to this day, perhaps still holding up the earth now. This is why pretty much all depictions of Atlas are with him holding a sphere on his back, though what this sphere actually is is debated. Some depict him holding the earth itself, while others depict something called the celestial sphere, which contains earth, the heavens, and space. Whatever it is, it'll be pretty heavy, so not the most fun thing to be holding for all time. Some stories, however, say that he merely holds the pillars that hold up heaven and earth. Unsurprisingly, we aren't too sure how the Greek Titan got his name in the first place, though there are some ideas. The popular idea is that it comes from the ancient Greek Telenai, meaning to bear, which makes sense as he's bearing the weight of the world on his shoulders. And because he is known for holding up planet Earth and everything on it, over time Atlas became linked to all things geographic and cartographic, and things in these fields got named after him. In Northern Africa, we have the Atlas Mountains, which are named after him. And one story goes that the Titan was actually turned to stone by looking into Medusa eyes, and his rock and fallen body became the Atlas mountain range. And of course a book of maps is called an Atlas, named after the Greek Titan too. Though these are not the only things to be named after him. Atlas as a name has become linked with strength and endurance, so all kinds of things have been named after him, from cities to ships to robots to moths to craters on our moon to the name of a whole moon, one of Saturn's to be precise. Atlas has even become a human surname too, however for us there's something in particular we want to look at which was named after the Greek Titan, and that's the second largest ocean on our planet, the Atlantic Ocean. While it may be only the second largest ocean, make no mistake, the Atlantic Ocean is still huge. In fact, it's more than 41 million square miles in size, and is 5.2 miles deep at its deepest point. Of course, many fish can be found in these waters, but it's home to many marine mammals like seals and dolphins, and to sea reptiles like turtles. It's big, kinda scary, but also pretty darn cool. Of course, this ocean is named in honour of the Greek Titan of Atlas, but there's way more to it than that. It seems that the name Atlantic Ocean actually 
actually existed before the Greeks knew about the actual Atlantic Ocean. Initially, the Atlantic Ocean was something of a concept used by the likes of ancient Greek historian Herodotus. It was a hypothetical ocean that may have lied west to the Strait of Gibraltar. It made all the sense in the world for there to be an ocean there, but the Greeks themselves seemingly never voyaged to find it for themselves. It was only years later that the Romans found this huge ocean and gave this very real ocean the hypothetical Greek ocean name, the Atlantic. And what's interesting is that while I may be using Atlantic as a noun, it was initially an adjective used to describe anything west of Africa slash the Strait of Gibraltar, hence why it's formally called the Atlantic Ocean and not just the Atlantic, as the ocean is to the west of Africa. The word Atlantic itself is thought to mean Sea of Atlas and derives from the earlier name of Atlantis, meaning Island of Atlantis, and this is of course a name we are interested in finding out more about. The lost city of Atlantis has taken on a seriously legendary status, people are always searching for it, and the search for Atlantis has been covered in cheesy movies, cheesy documentaries, and seriously clickbait YouTube videos. But in all honesty, I don't think this was ever meant to be the case. Atlantis doesn't originate from some ancient myth or story, but rather it first appeared in a dialogue of Plato's, the famous Greek philosopher. Atlantis appeared in Plato's Timaeus and Clitaeus dialogues. In these scripts, Plato talked about a far off civilization that lived on an island in the ocean west of Africa called Atlantis. They were supposedly a seriously advanced and wealthy civilization who eventually collapsed and their island home sunk into the depths. It's widely presumed that Plato wasn't discussing a real place, but Atlantis is more of a metaphorical landmass that Plato created so he could apply his philosophical ideas and morals to somewhere and not step on the toes of an existing landmass that went against his concept of the state slash republic. It was basically his doll's house slash model train set, a fictional location he had complete control over where he could craft their ideals and their history to his taste and to fit the philosophical tale he wanted to tell. There was actually a rather minor element to Plato's work, it was just a fictitious land Plato used. Though, as we aren't 100% sure that Plato made it up, legends of the lost city of Atlantis started to unfold, and over the next 2000 plus years, since Plato probably created it, B-movies, the History Channel, and YouTube turned Atlantis into the unsolved mystery it is today. Though, why did Plato call this island Atlantis? Well, I imagine it's partly to do with the whole Atlantic being an adjective for West of Africa, and this island was supposedly West of Africa. But there's more to it. As I said, Atlantis means island of Atlas, and Plato did explain to us why it was Atlas's island. He explained that the island's first king was Atlas, though this was a different Atlas. You won't find any titans holding up the world here, I'm afraid. Plato wrote that this Atlas who became the first king of Atlantis was the eldest son of Poseidon, the Greek god of the sea. So despite having the same name, these are two different Atlases, which is fine. Many actual people have the same names, so why not mythological characters too? However, I've also seen it said that these two Atlases are actually one and the same. These Greek mythologies seem to overlap with one another rather often. We mentioned how one story said Atlas was made to hold the world up, and another story said he was turned into the Atlas Mountains. Greek mythology is a lot of things and confusing is one of them. So, you could argue there is and isn't a connection between these two names of Atlantis and Atlantic. They're both named after Atlas, just possibly different Atlases. However, it seems that both these terms sprung up around the same time, so I'd say there definitely is a connection. Plus, Atlantis is in the Atlantic, so there's another link. But how on earth does Atlanta fit into all this? It's nowhere near the Atlantic Ocean, and unlike Atlantis, it isn't underwater. Yet. Atlanta is the state capital and most populated city in the US state of Georgia. The city as a whole covers just under 137 square miles and has a population of just over 420,000. While not surrounded by water, it's surrounded by woodland and trees, hence why the city has the nickname of the city in a forest. Atlanta is home to some big businesses too like CNN, UPS and even Coca-Cola. It's also home to the busiest airport in the world and has the world's largest drive-in restaurant, so there's something to brag about. I think. The city was initially founded in 1837 to serve as the end of the Western Atlantic Railroad. Initially, it had the name Marthasville, named in honor of the governor at the time's daughter. It was also known as Terminus as it was the last stop on the aforementioned railroad line. It seems this city has always been linked with transportation, and it is still to this day with their seriously busy airport. Though, how did it go from Marthasville to Atlanta? Well, for that, we have J. Edgar Thompson to thank, the chief engineer of the Georgia Railroad. It was he who suggested the name be changed to Atlanta. Atlanta, which is seen as the feminine form of Atlantic and it's believed Thompson himself created it. 
But why exactly did Thompson want the city to have this name? Well, there's a few ideas as to why this was. One is simply because of the name of the train line it served as the end of, the Western Atlantic Line. So Thompson may have just taken the Atlantic from there. However, there is another theory, and it relates to the former governor's daughter. Her name was Martha Lumpkin, hence why the city was initially called Marthasville. However, her middle name was apparently Atalanta, which is also the name of a huntress character in Greek mythology. So the story goes that Thompson liked this name too, and because it fit with the railroad and linked to the previous name of the city, it was chosen and has stuck around since. Though how much of these tales are true we don't seem to know for sure. I even read her middle name wasn't actually Atalanta, and her father only said it was after the name Atlanta had been chosen for the city, to tie it in more with her. Also, I have no idea where the second A went when the name was applied to the city. Though, if we do believe that this was Martha's middle name, and the city was named in her honour, then interestingly enough that means there is an odd connection between these three names of Atlanta, Atlantis and Atlantic. They're all named after characters of Greek mythology, just three different ones. Atlanta is named after the skilled huntress Atalanta, Atlantis is named after the first king of the island, Atlas, and the Atlantic is named after the titan Atlas, who is still carrying Atlanta, Atlantis and the Atlantic Ocean, and will carry on doing so to the end of time. Atlanta, Atlantic and Atlantis were suggested by Amber Luce, and thanks to their suggestion they will now be honoured as name explains patron saint of Atlanta, Atlantic and Atlantis. Do you have a good idea for somewhere that's name could be covered in a name explain video? If so then please consider donating on Patreon. Just one dollar a month helps keep the channel running and earns you a weekly chance to suggest somewhere that could be turned into a name explain video and you too could be a name explain Patreon saint. Thank you to all my patrons who support Name Explain on a monthly basis. Name Explain depends on small monthly donations from fans like you to help keep the channel running. Just the small amount of $2 a month helps in a huge way, grants you patron exclusive Name Explain extras, and gets your name here with all these awesome people. Thank you. Hello all and thank you so much for reaching the end of the video. Check out another video and subscribe to stay in the loop on all things Name Explain. You can follow myself on Twitter at NameExplainYT. Follow me there and tweet the name Donald at me so you came from this message. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and once again, thank you all so much.